sandwich. Love the sandwich. Uh, love that. Excellent. All right, we're back. Hour number two, Porcelli's Deli. Thanks for being with us. Uh, our special guest, Dre Montez. Catch his um, his podcast. <laughs> Camera's over here. Right, there we go. That's the downfall uh, of the TV. Yeah, but you're so attracted to it. You can't, I know. You can't take your it's eyes off it. Oh, my God. Am I on television? You get a smaller yeah. monitor. Uh, who's to blame is the name of uh, the Dre Montez podcast. Did you ever think of calling it the Dre Montez podcast? I thought about that, but... Now that you bring that up, I have a new thing I'm doing starting Monday, so thank you. That's a good segue. It's yeah, going to be go, called uh, Mornings with Montez. It'll be live on my Dre Montez page and also Midday with Montez. Love that. I'm going to do two shows a day live through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Right on. But the podcast will still be there. We have a page on uh, Facebook, Who's to Blame, the podcast, and Instagram. Who's so you're busy. Podcast. Got to be, man. Got to be. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. I want to talk about, cover, and put my thoughts out there before the people that get paid the big bucks ruin it. Well, I thought that was us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's right. We're not making anything. Uh, it's not about money anymore. Yes, Let's it have is. Some fun. Yes, it is. Fun don't pay the rent. <laughs> Ain't nothing going on but the rent. Remember that song? Ain't nothing no going on. No such thing as a free trip to Vegas, rent. is it? Right. You gotta do something. All right. So last time Dre was in. We briefly touched on, but didn't talk in depth about um, baseball movies. And um, actually, Dre's having a little problem right now with his smart TV. That's a dumbass TV right oh now my because God. Don't even you get can't watch right it. Now. I can't do anything until I get the internet. You know, you were just talking <laughs> Go about. outside. You were just talking about uh, <laughs> the games that you play and yes. Madden and. NBA and WNBA. The struggle is real, Vic. I can't get online with my game. So for all my gamers out there, you feel me on this one here. When you buy the game, you can't get online, so you have to play the version that they give you. Oh, poor So guy. you only get a chance to play against the computer. So I'm doing Madden. I can't do my NHL because that's how I bought it online. I'm doing uh, NBA and WNBA and also MLB March to October. But against nobody but the computer. Yeah, against the computer. Computer easier to beat or harder to beat? Uh, it's intriguing. It's yeah. intriguing. It's it's a lot of fun. A lot of bells and whistles to it. A lot of excitement. I love it. It's like the sound of one hand clapping when you're playing against the computer. <laughs> right. I will admit to you now, I am so bad at all those kind of games. If I play the Madden game, I throw the ball right in the ground. <laughs> you can't do that now. Right. It's impossible. If I play the Call of Duty game, the game comes on, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, it'd be fun to play one of those gambling games. Oh. I cannot play a game where you are, what do they call first person? They call it first, first person. First person shooter, yeah. First person shooter, can't do it. The only game I play is the Godfather Black Hand Edition on Wii. What the hell is that? It's the Godfather. It's the I, Godfather game. You when are the Wii first came out, I saw more people hurting themselves, so I never got into the Wii fascination. Right. Well, I don't. Uh, you know, I could see the. Pro whoops. The tennis when you're playing the tennis, and oh my God, like I went a, right through the screen. A device that goes around your wrist. To, yeah. To prevent that. Right. But there were people still hurting themselves like right. the damn hoverboard. Right. Right. This is just uh, you're a character, and you are in the Godfather world. And the cool thing about it is, is that. Um, Marlon Brando was Marlon Brando was still alive when they made it, so he's the actually the voice of the Godfather, and uh, um, uh, Robert Duvall is the is the voice of um, Tom Hagen. I love the and smell of May Palm in the morning. James Caan is the voice of Sonny Corleone, and it's all about shooting and shoot 'em ups, and you know, and I you know when I get angry, there's nothing better than just shooting people, man. Uh, I'm not the only one out there that goes to video games and they get angry. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. I have to go to the game when I'm not when I'm having a bad day. Let's turn the game on. Yeah. Let's get it in. Yeah. Turn it in. Shoot some people. Get your aggressions out. So, um, meanwhile, Dre can't watch any baseball movies either. Uh, so let's talk about baseball movies. Let's do it. Last time we talked, tell me tell me the, the baseball movies that you that you like the best. By the way, everybody look at. Uh, Jen's Snapchat home run uh, baseball helmet. <laughs> I mean, I like Field of Dreams. Eight million. Okay, out. stop, stop there. Uh, Field of Dreams. Love Field of Dreams, but there's not a whole lot of baseball in it. There's not a whole lot of game in it. But it's the. 
story. I get it. I it love it. Story. I'm just saying. But it's still a baseball movie. Ab right or wrong. No, absolutely. And it's a great baseball movie. One of my favorites. But like, like I told you, my second favorite baseball movie is A League of Their Own. You know, great movie. Because the baseball is all right, is all accurate. Yes, it is. They captured a lot of interesting, on-point facts in that movie. Exactly. Um, so that's my second favorite. And then I told you that my favorite baseball movie is the Bingo Long Traveling All Stars and Motor Kings. There that's it my is. Billy D. Williams right Billy there. Billy D. Williams that's and uh, Richard Pryor in that movie. And James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. And it's about how the, in uh, the Negro Leagues and even the, even the black owners of the Negro League teams treated the players badly. It's like black people aren't having a hard enough time. <laughs> it was, the black owners. It was something else to see that in that movie. They can never remake that movie. They can't. They can't remake that movie. They can't. And I wish I, they could reshow it. And the public, I think that would be a great thing to do, to just to show the story of baseball through the eyes of the Negro League through Hollywood. I wish, you know, we, I think you and I also talked about time travel. I would love to go back and watch a Negro League game, you know, the uh, Kansas City Monarchs and, I don't know, the New York uh, Titans or whatever, whatever they were called. Um, Birmingham Barons. Birmingham Barons. I, I, you know, I would just love to do that. And the Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings, they took, and this actually happened in, in real life baseball when the best players in Major League Baseball, because they were being treated unfairly by the owners, branched off and made their own little league, which was a failure, yes. and they had to go crawling back to the original owners. But I think it's crazy that in 1921, the Supreme Court of the United States made baseball not have to adhere to antitrust laws. That's what they screwed up in right there. And it's still, to this day, baseball does not have to adhere to antitrust laws. Break that down for the people that don't understand what you're talking about. Antitrust laws? Yeah. Well, it's like monopolies and, you know, stuff like that. There's a picture of the Bingo Long Traveling All Stars. Great movie. Go get that at your local video provider. Can't even. Blockbuster gone. It's an Airbnb now. Bend, Oregon. They still got family videos around. Oh, those are cool. They give you like 90 movies for like five dollars. <laughs> and they don't even care if you rewind. Care. You bring it back if you want. Bring it back. It's in the middle of. Don't even worry about it. And, but Bingo Long's traveling all stars and Motor Kings. Um, Richard Pryor's character plays a Cuban. His uh, his Cuban name is Carlos Navar. <laughs> So he, because they'll let Cubans play in the in the major leagues, or but not American blacks. Indians. So the the Negro players were portrayed in real life baseball back then to get them over the color barrier. They were American Indians, right, or Puerto Rican, right. Or well, whatever. That's a, he was Cuban. Yeah, Cuban, and a lot of that went through, and a lot didn't. But it's an interesting story what they did to try to get the Negro ball player right in major league baseball. So the Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings were a, te a team of all-stars from the Negro Leagues that um, did barnstorming. Explain to people barnstorming. 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 Like coming out and, let me see, attacking with everything they have to well, get the It was more there. of touring. It was more of, of, of touring around, barnstorming around, around the oh, South. Oh, they were traveling yeah. with the difference to, to show the game in a different light. Right. To give the exposure to the players and to the league itself. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. That's how they met some of these players as well. That's right. And they would play games early on in their, in their little experiment, and nobody would show up. and Because they would just show up at the ballpark. And this old black man says, you got to march into town barnstorming. You got to kick that mule, he says. And so they come in with music and they're dancing with like a little parade through town and everybody's getting all revved up and everybody and then goes to the games and the crowd started to get bigger and bigger like the Globetrotters uh, more attended than some of the the, uh, the regular Negro League games right because they were more entertaining absolutely there's a lot of entertainment going on and there were times uh, during the game where they would do like a slow motion kind of fun thing you know where they weren't really throwing the ball and a little Globetrotter-esque kind of a um, scene, you know, right? And I, I, I've watched that movie so many times when I was a kid. Recorded it on VHS, and my brother and I used to watch that all the damn time, and <laughs> it was just great. When's the last time you saw it? 
Uh, actually, my wife found it for me, so not too not too long ago. We we That's watched awesome. it. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so if if you and by the way, one person on our list of of uh, Stephen Yash, who I believe is from New Jersey, and I believe he used to listen to me. Got Jersey in the building. Did I do that right? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually know. <laughs> Stephen likes the bingo long traveling all stars and motor kings. I mean, it, it's a great movie. The baseball is accurate. Um, oh, and you know who's in it? Uh, uh, he, he, it was his real name. Now, uh, what's the name of the band in Animal House? Otis Day. And the Otis Night Day. Star. Otis Day. Is Isn't in it? No he, way. He plays Rainbow. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I can see it. Now. Yeah. Wow. Rainbow don't do nothing but give me his bat and bob his head. Because they were going to get rid of him because they didn't have any money. Right, right. And then they steal the money from him because he can't talk. I don't think they, Rainbow can talk. You know who's in it? Oh, I know that guy. <laughs> uh, but he, it was under his regular name at the time. Okay, so that's my rant on the bingo long traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings. Now, speaking of baseball movies being about the game, how do you feel about the movie Eight Men Out? Uh, well, huh, Eight Men Out... I love Eight Men Out. I hate the story of Eight Men Out. It's a horrible story. But it's true. Arnold Rothstein. Um, okay, so The Godfather movie? Okay. Godfather 2? Is that a baseball movie? No. Wouldn't it be funny if it was? <laughs> uh, come on. Picture them here. Come on. Uh. Right over the fence. It's coming to you. If Marlon Brando was a manager, I ain't got no more stuff I'm gonna have to take out. I'm gonna have to bring another language. You should make that. The Godfather, the ninth inning. In Godfather 2, Lee Strasberg plays a character named Hyman Roth. And Hyman Roth was actually a protege of Vito Corleone way back in the day. And his name, his real name, is Hyman Suchowski. But back in the day, the Godfather said to him, Who's, who, What man do you admire the most? And he said, Arnold Rothstein. So he goes, Roth, Hyman Roth, that's your name, Hyman Roth. So Arnold Rothstein was a gambler who never wanted to make a bet he knew he couldn't win. He bet a guy in a billiard hall, because the guy had this, this talent where he could swallow a billiard ball and then cough it back up again and not joke, and not choke, right? So Arnold Rothstein says, I'll bet you you can't. Oh, hold on, babe. Yeah. Wait a minute. It was a bar trick, you know. He could swallow a pool ball. Yep. And then regurgitate it back up and not and not choke and not. Oh my God. That would and never would... fly post COVID. Because <laughs> <laughs> he would he would he would be in a bar and he'd say, Hey, watch, I can I can you know swallow this ball and bring it back up again. And everybody and win all this money. So Arnold Rothstein says, I'll bet you, but I picked the ball. <laughs> and the guy says, Okay, you're on. So Arnold Rothstein picks the cue ball, the white one, which is just a little bit bigger than the rest of the balls. Right. And the guy tried it and choked to death and died right there in the billiard hall. Winner. And then Arnold Rothstein obviously won the bet. So Arnold Rothstein fixed the 1919 World Series. He paid members of the Chicago White Sox, who are now called the Black Sox, yes. um, to throw the series against the Cincinnati Reds. And he was going to obviously bet on the Reds and win all this money. Well, turns out they found out about it. And... Eight guys, I guess, were, were uh, not convicted, by the way. But banned from baseball. But banned from baseball, one being Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, man. That who was from Missouri, was he not? Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, and Shoeless Joe Jackson could have been the Ty Cobb uh, of baseball. What a much nicer attitude. Much nicer. Ty Cobb, not a good man. Oh, terrible, man. terrible guy. Oh, man. Um, and, they, and they were banned from baseball. I believe that... Uh, Charlie Sheen is in uh, yes, he's Eight in Men Out. Yeah. And so, I do I like the movie? Yeah, re really, really good movie. Um, but I hate the story. I, I, I just hate the story. And I don't know if you watched Boardwalk Empire while it was on HBO. We talked a little bit about that. Arnold Rothstein. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Arnold Rothstein's character is is in the in the show, and actually, uh, Nucky gets him out of trouble. He comes to Nucky Johnson for, for uh, Nucky Thompson, sorry. His real name is Nucky Johnson. And, and Nucky gets him, gets him out of trouble. So, yes, I do like Eight Men Out. I love the drama of it. Um, and 
you know, the, the, the legend, whether it's true or not, when they were walking out of the courtroom, Shoeless Joe Jackson's walking out of the courtroom, and a kid walks up to him and says, say it ain't so, Joe. And that's supposedly where that, right, where that right. phrase was born by that kid because, you know, these guys forget how much kids look up to them. That's, that has been my big ordeal with sports as it gets more and more, I guess, you can get more connected with today's I was just going to say distant. Online yeah. and find out about things you should not be knowing about. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in our day growing up, we just knew they played ball. Right. We didn't know who their wife was, where they lived at, what type of, how many cars they had, mm-hmm. how much money they made. Mm-hmm. Nobody care about that. Nobody but today, did. that is like one of the biggest things people want to know. Who you married to? Who you dating? What, what, what kind of car are you driving? What's mm-hmm. your house look like? Not to mention back then, they didn't make much money. No. You know, Yogi Berra had to go back and be the maitre d' at a, at a restaurant on the hill, you know, in the off-season. There were guys who went back to the coal mines and, and worked during the coal mines in the winter and then played baseball in the summer. But um, you're right. It's a distance that was there that we didn't need to know. We should draw that line. Yeah. You know, I don't want to know all that because then it makes me wonder why you're not doing the job and performing the way you should perform doing the game, because now I'm bringing in your nightlife in there. I'm bringing up your social media skills now. I'm bringing up you more concerned on what you're doing with your financial earnings than what you need to be doing in perfecting your craft right. to make this team better and yourself better and that fan base better. Right. That, that makes me question that a whole lot. So, um, we'll get back to the movies in a second. Pete Rose, should he be in the Hall of Fame? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Charlie Hustle, why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, there are guys who were suspended for using cocaine more than once. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, we had a little story here in St. Louis when it comes to the Book of Sugar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. They got rid of a couple players because right, of that. Right, right, So, you know, he, he, bet on, he bet on the games. I get it. But it's funny that I heard Bob Costas tell a story one time. When you walk into a clubhouse in Major League Baseball, there's a sign that says, no betting. Yes. There's not a sign that says, no cocaine. <laughs> You should know better. I think they should know better. <laughs> but no betting. I mean, at least, at least he was betting on his own team. There you go. So it's not like he was throwing. It wasn't like a point-shaving right. scandal like in the 50s. I believe in this team. Yeah. It's I, like people bet on their kids. They right. bet on the team that their kids play on. Right. I saw that firsthand. Yeah. You know, Pop Warner Sports is a big gambling on the side. Right. Is they, it really? They, oh, my God. They did a story on the Miami Pop football. Warner games? Pop Warner football. How old is, is that? 12? 10 to 12? That's nine on up. <laughs> what nine-year-old kid is getting gambled on out there? Yeah. Snoop Dogg had a team out there like that. Miami, Florida was huge. They did an expose on that through ESPN and Magazine about gambling in youth sports. It's hmm. huge. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. I remember I made um, 10 bucks. When the Miracle Mets, when the, when the Mets beat the Orioles, I bet 10 different kids a dollar apiece. Casey Stengel? No, no. What, the manager? Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges. Miracle Mets. What year was that? 69. 69. Yeah. Ah, I should have known. Cleon Jones wore number 21. Tommy A.G. wore number 20. Uh, Jerry Grody was catcher number 15. Art Shamsky was the first baseman. Oh, and Don Clendenin. Sorry, Shamsky wore 24. Don Clendenin wore 22. This is how I, this is how I passed the postal. It's numerology, man, right there. You got it. But I remember I bet 10 different kids a dollar apiece on the World Series. Not that I knew where that money was coming from had I lost those bets, <laughs> but I won. And I, and, I, and I got home, and I had 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Last time I gambled on baseball, Bill Buckner let that ball go between his legs. 1986. Let it go against the Mets. Yep, that's right. Against the Mets, right. That's the last time I gambled on baseball. I'm done. I'm out. That did, was enough for me. Did you and I talk about the movie Rounders at all, the poker movie? Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Yeah. He, Giovanni Ribisi, too, right? Uh, no. Is not in that one? No. Um, uh, John, uh, well, John Totoro and the crazy John Malkovich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John yeah. Malkovich plays, plays Teddy KGB. That's right. But he goes, to, he goes back to Teddy KGB's and he goes, I feel like, I'm, I feel like Buckner walking back into Shea. Because he had lost all his money there early in the movie and he came back. And it's another thing I wanted to talk about, Rounders. I, okay, here's my problem, okay? When I watch movies, I always watch with subtitles. Me too. I like watching with subtitles in you case miss you so miss much something. You right. miss so much. And if you ever watch Peaky Blinders on Netflix, Netflix yes. original, they're talking with a 
British accent sometimes, and you miss little things, you know, because of the. So I watch with the subtitles, and then Tom Hardy's character, Alfie Tom, Solomon's, comes Tom in. Tom Hardy. I can't even understand him when I'm reading the subtitles. <laughs> Yeah, all right, come on. Then. Oh, God damn it. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's, the, it's like uh, uh, Brad Pitt in uh, Snatch. Yeah, it's like. The characters don't even know what he's saying. How am I supposed to know what he's right saying? There, man, come God, on. great movie. Snatch is a great movie. Yes, it is. And uh, uh, I don't know, I, we're, we're tangenting here big time, but there's one character, one actor in Snatch, his name is Stephen Graham, who um, speaks in his, his, his home British, thick British accent, but he played Al Capone in Boardwalk Empire. Okay. And I didn't know that he was British at the time, you know? Like, he was like, yeah, okay, come on, we'll talk and we'll see dice. You know what I mean? Like that. And then I saw an interview with him, and I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's British? I'm yeah, amazed he how some of these guys, we find out their original dialect. Right. I and love it. They That's acting. Over. Yeah, it is. That's, That's acting. That's bringing it to the forefront to me. So, uh, all right, so let's get back to the movies before we tangent our way out of the show here. So, Eight Men Out, do like it. Field of Dreams is great. Um, the The... The, the monologue that James Earl Jones talks about the passage of time and there's always baseball, you know? I love that. And we blew that this year. We blew that baseball did not survive COVID, you know? You think baseball is failing right now? I don't think it's failing. I think we didn't have it. 1918 Spanish flu, we didn't cancel baseball. World War I, we didn't cancel baseball. World War II, we didn't cancel baseball. 9-11, we missed it for a week, and then we were back. But we never have gone this long without real, true baseball. Meaning the fans are there. Yeah, the fans. how it's supposed to be. And that screws up the whole James Earl Jones monologue. Throughout it all, there's been baseball, Ray. We blew it. So it's going to be an asterisk to you. It is. The sports. Absolutely. It's a whole asterisk Absolutely. 2020. Absolutely. And you know what? I don't even care about the NBA. Not that I don't care about other sports. But baseball is baseball. And you baseball. need fans. You need fans. It's one of the main sports where you need that cheer. You need that seventh inning stretch. Right. You need that clap, that cadence going on. And the thing about it, Dre, is if you, go, if you do time travel back to 1927, it's the same game. You won't even know that you've traveled back in time except that the, the uniforms are baggy. It's the same game. A double play goes 6-4-3 the same way. You still hit the cutoff man to, you know, to get the guy scoring from second on a single. Base basketball has changed drastically from the peach basket on the pole <laughs> in Springfield, Massachusetts. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, big time. Um, hockey has changed dramatically oh with the things they can do with a stick. And can't do. You know, and, and can't do. Um, uh... Football has changed a little bit. Football has changed a lot because back in the day, they didn't even throw. You just watched these guys run for the forward for, pass. You know, before the forward pass really came into, into play. Baseball is the same game. 80 years later, 90 years later, 100 years later, it's the same game. But without the fans, it's a little different. It's big time different. Without the fans, that ain't baseball. The Cubs Cardinals series doesn't feel like the Cubs Cardinals series when it was on last week. It didn't feel the same. That's right. You can't boo. I want everybody to hear the booing. You can't of hear that. Of course. Do you it's want to hear them yell at the umpire? Yes. You know? I do that too much as it is now. Call them blind, you know? Uh, you know, uh, Humphrey Bogart, the legendary actor, said, I'd rather have a hot dog at the ballpark than a steak at the Ritz. There's something about... Somebody sitting in a ballpark, eating a hot dog, drinking a beer, watching the game. So in 2009, the new Yankee Stadium opened up. And I watched a documentary on that. So they're talking to the guys that had a hand in building the stadium. They're diehard Yankee fans. They got certain memorabilia, things to remember. They want that their kids and grandkids to know about. So the day that the game is played, they're going around the stadium talking to the fans. And this one guy says, this isn't, this isn't baseball. This stadium is not built for the fans. There's no way in hell you should be getting sushi at a baseball game. Right. Baseball games is beer, hot dogs, right. Right. and seeing the game. Right. Like you can't even see the game in certain parts of the state. What do you, what do you think about just rebuilding Yankee Stadium? When they, uh, again? No, I mean when they when, did it. When they did it? Yeah. Well, they were trying to go with the changing of the time, the changing of the guard, like when Wrigley went to lights in 88. But I it's still it. Wrigley. It's still Wrigley. Okay. So here's the thing. I, I went to go watch the Yankees when I lived in New York up until 1990. Three, and I sat there and I watched people dig into the same batter's box that Babe Ruth did. Wow. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, that means something. That's that's something that his son, Hal, and the one that runs it now. Uh, oh, uh, you're talking about Steinbrook? Steinbrook. Steinbrook. Steinbrunner? Yeah. The one that's, because Hal died in April of 2020. Right. But the one that, the son that runs it now, and he doesn't get it. He's, he even says that. He's like, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I'm in it for the financial part. He mm-hmm. said, numbers is my thing. Everybody else think looking at the budget is boring. That's what I'm into. Yeah. I'm not into marketing. The sister, uh, uh, Jennifer, mm-hmm. that's her job. Right. And they kind of admitted that, hey, we wish our dad, he was still alive at the time, would have had a little bit more involvement in this because it wouldn't have been this way probably. Right. There could have been another way to do Yankee Stadium. Did it need to be rebuilt or should it have just been remodeled, added on to? I wish the Cardinals still played at Sportsman's Park. Wow. It was going grand. Right. Never saw it. it. I never did either. But I I don't know. There was something about when you walked into Yankee Stadium in the 70s, in the 80s, and Bob Shepard said, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Yankee Stadium. You, got, you really got chills, you know? And then you're watching the game, and at some point in that game, you say, my God, Babe Ruth dug in right there in that batter's box. Babe Ruth. When Sultan of Swat. Bunting all around the, the facade during the playoffs. And, well, there was no playoffs during the, during the World Series, you know. So I don't know. All right. Is there a oh. baseball movie that you do not like? Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm not sure about that. Hold on. Yes, there is. Okay. So Field of Dreams, great movie. They were supposed to have a game there this season. Yep. That didn't happen. Thank you, Corona. You know? So what were they going to do with that, by the way? Was the cornfield, the, the outfield wall, if you hit the ball into the cornfield, there was a home run? How I was that going to work? I think they were going to put up the fencing for it because they still use it as a tourist attraction. Right. People still go out there and visit and check it out. But I just want to go there at night and sit on that mound and close my eyes. And I just want to really see and feel if I hear, if they build it, they will go. <laughs> and if, and if, you, if you close your eyes, you'll, you'll feel I bet, come out I of bet, the, come I out bet of I the, would. God. Awesome. All right, The Natural. Oh, my God. Come on now. Don't pick me out of winter, Bobby. <laughs> uh, Sad Boy Special. Major League. Oh, Charlie Sheen, the first one. And Omar Epps, yes. With a Maze Hayes. Yeah, that's okay. I like it. Um, a lot of people are picking Naked Gun just because of the, the baseball Frank Drevin. scene. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Sandlot, I like the Sandlot. Hey, that was my hey, pick. that movie right there, man. I went to see that movie when I was in the Navy. That Wait, was, you were in the Navy? I was in the Navy. I never thanked you for serving. Oh, anytime, anytime, anytime. Station over there, and I saw that on a matinee, and my best friend was off that day. I didn't know it, and as the movie started, somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I look, it's him. Mm. So we sat there and watched that movie together. Wow. That movie was the thing, because everyone that played baseball as a kid, Sandlot baseball with their friends, it was always a yard that the ball went into that you knew damn well that ball better not go into. Right. We're going to have a hard time getting right. it back. Dog or whatever. So James L. Jones' character kind of resonated a whole lot of things in my childhood right. when it came to playing pickup, saying a lot of baseball with your friends. Right. I remember telling the story, but the conversation wasn't about baseball. The conversation was kids, because uh, you have to worry about your kids now when they leave because there's so many scumbags that oh, walk yeah. this earth. You know, but when I was in middle school, I used to grab my glove, grab my bat, get on my bike, we'd ride to North Junior, and we'd play baseball all day, all day until long. dinner time. As long as I was home at 5.30 for the pasta, everything was good, <laughs> you know? Them lights come on, you hear them crickets, you better be home. Oh, yeah, on no your doubt, way. No doubt. Uh, Bull Durham, minor league ball. Oh, I love it. Yeah? Up the field in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. Is a, a shout out to minor league baseball and mm-hmm. a job well done at Diddy. And mi- minor league baseball, I think, really was the big victims in this whole COVID thing because yes. they canceled all the minor league games this year, completely gone, nothing, nowhere. But I'd like to commend some of the major league baseball players who get paid a lot of money. Some have come forward, some of do it anonymously. They went out and paid some of these minor league baseball. Did not guys know that. That's great. Their money. I thought that was awesome. That's what great. They did. That's pretty cool. Love that. Moneyball. Yes. Come on now, Bill James, <laughs> the theory on winning yeah. based on statistics? Right. Just think if the Oakland A's would have done it. Yeah. Oh, man, Billy Bean, Billy Bean would be something else. Yeah. He'll be uh, in, the, in the rafters right now. He's yeah. still 
chasing that World Series. Right. Still chasing. God, the Oakland A's in, in the early 70s were just, they didn't, they, it, they could have not won one game and they would have been the favorite, my favorite uniforms because of the white spikes and the gold uh, 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 sanitary socks that went under the stirrups. Just great. Yeah. Uh, just great. MC Hammer was their bat boy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right. So Jan Hutchinson uh, did not pick a baseball movie, but clearly um, she picked the naughty 90s, which was an Abbott and Costello movie, where they do the perfect who's on who's first. first. Ah, good call, Jan. And here's the really cool thing, okay? In that movie, when they're doing who's on first, Bud Abbott is wearing a baseball uniform that says the St. Louis Wolves. Ah, look at you. Mm-hmm. Because before 1955, six, or eight, more like eight. Eight. Prior to 1958, there were no, none, zero Major League Baseball teams west of the Mississippi. St. Louis was the most western baseball team. And we were called the Wolves. No, 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 no. Still, we were Cardinals. We've always been the Cardinals. Or St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, well, no, yeah. it's two different teams, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the point is is that the, 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 he just happened to have St. Louis was, was the thing. Gotcha. And St. Louis uh, was the westernmost, the Cardinals were the westernmost Major League Baseball team until the Dodgers and the Giants moved from New York to, to California. Well, who the heck are the Wolves? Just a self, fix, self fictional made. team. It's a fictional movie. I mean, it's, it's like just the a Zephyrs <laughs> in any sports movie. They, yeah. they have the colors of the Raiders, but they call the Zephyrs in the damn movie gotcha. for some reason. Now, back in the 20s and the 30s, not only were there no teams west of the Mississippi, but there was no TV. So the only way you could enjoy baseball was on the radio. So during the off season, Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth and all these big names from the 20s and 30s would barnstorm through the Southwest and they would take get on the train and they would go play ball in, in the Western states because they never got to see these guys live in person. So you can go see Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig play live in an exhibition game, but that's what they would do. Purity of the game right there. Purity of the game, man. That's what it's all about. Field of Dreams. The Slugger's Wife? Oh, yeah. The Slugger's Wife. That was pretty cool. I don't know that. It was, a, uh, I believe, a first baseman or a catcher. It's hmm. uh, with uh, O'Keefe. Michael O'Keefe is the title character, I believe. Is that the guy from Caddyshack? Yeah. He's the, he's the baseball guy. Hmm. And he meets this little hot little groupie. And they hit it off. And... At that time, you know, it was portrayed that when athletes fell in love, they game fell off. Mm. You know, you couldn't be successful. Women you know, weakened legs. There it is. Kevin Costner proved it in the perfect game. Right. You know, it's 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 a I mean, uh, for the love of the game. Right, right, right. But yeah, that was a good movie, The Slugger's Wife. Never good saw. Call. Never saw. It. Yeah. Undrafted. Another movie I've never seen. Undrafted. Never saw that. Never saw that. Never saw that. Never saw that. Um, okay, so we have to talk about um, Pride of the Yankees. 1941, maybe? It's the Lou Gehrig movie? Uh, Lou Gehrig. And um, Gary Cooper, Mr. Box Office in the 30s and 40s, Mr. Handsome, there he is. played Lou Gehrig. Babe Ruth's actually in the movie. Uh, Bill Dickey is actually in the movie. And the thing about the movie is it's as corny as it comes. But still, it's one of my favorite baseball movies. Now, Gary Cooper, Lou Gehrig threw lefty, batted lefty. Gary Cooper couldn't do anything lefty. So everything you see, the numbers and everything, is all in real life backwards. And he would he would bat righty, but it would look lefty when they turned the film around. Uh -huh. And he would run to third base, would make it look like first base when you turn the film seven. around. Yeah. So um, Walter Brennan plays uh, Ed Blake, I think his name was Ed Blake, who was a writer for the New York Daily News who discovered Lou, Lou Gehrig. Because Lou Gehrig was a scholar. He went to Columbia, Ivy League school. Very smart kid. His parents were German immigrants. His mother didn't want anything to do with baseball, nothing to do with baseball. He wanted him to study and be an engineer like Uncle Otto. Uncle Otto's picture was on the wall in their living room. He had to be like Uncle Otto. And the father was like, go play baseball, you know? So that was just the uh, the whole 
thing about that. And then, of course, it ends with, you know, today, consider myself the luckiest man on the, on the face of the earth. Today, 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 today. I would like to thank, 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 thank everyone, one, 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 one. That's, that's the, uh, the Yankee Stadium echo. Yes, it is. Now about Ing, Harry. Um, good movie, though. And, and, if, and if you live in the New York, New Jersey area, it's, it's certainly one of the biggest ones that you, uh, that you watch. And it's funny that his parents were, were immigrants, so they have the, the German accent. And so finally, when he gets to the Yankees, it's okay with Mama to go to go play ball. <laughs> so Papa brings Mama to Yankee Stadium, and she says, "What are all those pillows doing on the field?" And he goes, "They're not pillows, Mama. They're bases. You slide into them." <laughs> she goes, "I slide into them." <laughs> and now Lou Gehrig is paying his father, so he doesn't have to work anymore. You know, but he doesn't tell his wife that it's because Lou's playing baseball. He just has this job. And you know when he goes to work? When he feels like it. <laughs> so it has, those, it has those little lines that you just say throughout your life, you know. Right. And uh, good movie, Pride of the Yankees. All right, anything else we're, uh, we're missing? Any other, any other uh, baseball movies we're missing? League of Their Own, we talked about that. That's great, absolutely. And I do like Eight Men Out. I don't dislike Eight Men Out. I don't want people to think I don't like the movie. Just, there's always a movie made about the bad time in all those sports. There's right. always that one movie, whether you want to face it or not, mm -hmm. it actually happened. The way it's portrayed or not correctly through Hollywood, or the attempt at it, you still got to appreciate the fact that they put it out there. Because right. a lot of people just know about a little paragraph, Black Sox scandal, that's it. Right. But to make a movie about it, that was pretty damn cool. Right, absolutely. And to learn about Arnold Rothstein, who was uh, one of the most infamous gamblers in, in history. And he died, he got stabbed, because he welched on a bet that he did lose. Wow. I think he was playing poker. And now, it wasn't a movie. It's more of a series. Kim Burns, baseball. Oh, my God. Oh, listen. The Bible. That, oh, my goodness. If you want to know about something, just sit back. Put your kid, put your daughter next to you, and sit back and enjoy the moment. It can take up a whole weekend. Some of the things I learned from that was that, first of all, back in the turn of the century, you were not allowed to doctor the ball in any way. If you were the pitcher, it had to be a straight ball, and the curved ball just freaked people out. And it was illegal for a while. You couldn't even throw a curve ball. Uh, and the things that they bring out in Ken Burns' baseball, this I love this list. Baseball is the only sport where the defense holds the ball. Hmm. You are right. Baseball is the only sport where the coach is called a manager. Baseball is the only sport where that manager wears the uniform of the team. Not a suit. Right. Baseball is the only sport where if you come out of the game, you can't go back in. True. Baseball is the only sport where there's not one set of dimensions for the playing field. Right? It's different. NFL's 100 yards. Baseball, 296 in right field in Yankee Stadium. could be 350 in another park. There's no set dimensions for it's baseball. Fenway right field is, what, 280, 220, right. something like that? Yeah. And, and <laughs> right field in Yankee Stadium was 296, I think it was. And that's why Babe Ruth hit all those home runs. But you know? Forbes Field, the biggest field at one time? Forbes Field in Cincinnati? Wasn't that the biggest field at one time in Major League Baseball? Could be. Could be. Then they went and made dimensions. Them. Then we screwed everything up in the 70s and made those cookie cutter, right? Three rivers, riverfront. Uh, Bush. Bush Stadium. It's all by the same guy, if you believe. The right. same guy designed all those same... same they, that's why they all look alike on television. And they're terrible. Yeah. They were terrible. <laughs> well, come on. I mean, old Bush Stadium. Those oh. arch pillars, man, that, that was beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. beautiful. However, it was 5 million degrees in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even imagine what the temperature was on the field. Well, that was because then they had that turf. And the Major League Baseball uniform with that turf... Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about Major League Baseball uniforms now. They're heavy. Now? Yo, they're, base they're heavy. The authentic Major League Baseball jersey is so heavy. Mm. And the players have so much on up under there, yeah. especially out too, they. Right. <laughs> Not that anybody cheats in baseball, we're just saying it's a possibility. But the Major League Baseball uniform is so heavy. You would think they would go to sublimation, some dry fit. A little lighter on the guys, but no, the authentic Major League Baseball 
jersey. Just the next time you're out and about when you can go out, just say, hey, let me see the authentic. Not a replica, the authentic. Let me, let me, let me touch it. I had no idea they were that They're heavy. They're so heavy. I thought they got away from that because they made them play in those heavy uniforms back in the day. And got Only in spring out. training. Hmm. Spring training, they're like really light, like featherweight. Hmm. But once the season starts, oh, my God. I remember we called it, uh, when, when the, the newer uniforms came out back in the 70s, we called them double knit for some reason, double mm. knit uniforms. And when we had, when you played baseball, when you play baseball, you can't just be good, you gotta look cool. Oh, you gotta look damn good in great, uniform, right? You have to look good. So I grew up in the day where you pulled the stirrups way up. And you stretch it. You stretch it out. We used to even cut it and put like elastic under there, you know, yeah. so they'll come up even further. And then we got uniforms, because the, the old uniforms had belt loops and you put you put a belt through it. Then they come up with beltless, remember? Like uh -huh. the Cardinals had the red, white, and blue belt strap around around the uh, around the waist. You had to look cool. That was a process. That was a chart in our locker room. I went to the boys club in St. Louis over on 11th Street in Sydney. And when I played Batam Varsity, there was a cutout board up there to show you how to put your uniform on. Oh, wow. To show you how the stages of putting your uniform on. So let me kind of take a guess on one part of it. So you have your pants on but not up. You have them down. And then you take the stirrups and you actually fold them once around the inside of the leg of the pants and then pull it up, right? That gave it that streamlined look down the ass. Is that you got to put your cup on, too, now. You got to put oh, your cup on. Oh, God. And you got to get a cup check when you come out of the locker room. I never, I never wore a cup. I stopped. I stopped wearing a cup. But I, I got away with it somehow. But he normally did a cup check on all the players. I don't know how I... <laughs> I don't know how I got away with it, but I um, was a catcher, and I never wore a cup. So was I. Yeah. I was a catcher for a long time. Got then I started it. growing. Then I moved to first base and pitching in third. Yeah. I, I started out as a third baseman, and then in our in our middle school, the junior the junior high team, our catcher was just didn't have a good arm. Good kid. Was able to block stuff, but he had just people were stealing all over. Who did you look up to as a catcher when you played? Oh my God! When you played that position, you, you try to mimic him, or you wear his number, or, or what was it? No, my number always had to be seven for Mickey Mantle, and that was that. Okay. And I'll fight you for number seven if I have to. Look at you, street cred. But uh, I want to say Thurman Munson, but I didn't throw like Thurman, and you know um, Johnny Bench. I mean, who didn't love Johnny Bench? You know. So our coach said, can I teach you how to be a catcher because we need you, you need your arm back there. And I learned how to be a catcher, mm -hmm. you know. I'm a Tony Pena Daryl Porter fan. Oh, Manny Sanguian. Manny Sanguian. Number 35 for the Pirates. Um, okay, since we bring up catching, this new rule, because they're trying to change baseball. We were talking about we before. We've been trying. They have changed okay. baseball. When it comes to the rules and the, the basic, the simplicity of the game that we fell in love with, that Abner Doubleday created, has somewhat changed into something where we need a we need a rule book watching the game, and we need a, a thesaurus as well to figure out what the hell is going on. So they took away the intentional walk. Well, they didn't take it away. You don't have to throw the ball now. You can just say intentional walk. And the guy walks to first base without having to four, pitch the four pitches. So that leaves um, that leaves something that happened, I believe it was in the 70, 72 World Series. It was the A's and the Reds. And I believe Johnny Bench was up at bat. And manager of the A's, Dick... Dick Hauser? Nope. Uh... 72, I was two years old. All right, sorry. So the, the manager comes out and talks to the pitcher, and he's talking to us, so you're the pitcher in first base, so they're talking, and it's like points to first base, like we're, we're just going to walk him, you know. And uh, the catcher, there's two strikes, and the catcher stands a little bit to the right of the plate, puts his arm out like this, and then the last second he comes back down and crouches, and the pitcher throws a strike. Can't do that anymore. Nope, can't do that. There's no trickery in the game no more. They've taken it away. They're trying to take the umpire away. They want to get a computer to call balls and strikes. You know, I knew that was going to come with, when, when they show a game. they got to show the box and show where the ball really went. I had such an argument with somebody one time about instant replays in baseball. 
I think that is a terrible idea. Terrible. And the guy said, so it's okay that they just got the call wrong? Yeah. You want to go back to the 85 World Series? Sometimes it they happens. get it wrong. Things happen. It happens. We got over it. We went 100 years without instant replay or any kind of, oops, bad call, disaster, you know? So The box is worse. Because when you're at home the box is worse. and you're watching the box and he says ball, you're yelling at the TV. You're yelling obscenities at the TV. That right. could be a child. It could be your parents and your respect. Right. But you'll lose your mind. Right. If it's in the box... You say if it's in the box, it's a strike. Right. But this guy said it's a ball. Mm -hmm. And then you have home plate umpires that are 25 years old. Get the hell out of here. Right. I'm with you, man. He's with you. He doesn't even understand the game of baseball yeah, at 25. Absolutely. I'm with you. Absolutely. doesn't even know the history of the game. Love that. Home plate umpire at 25 years old. Is that Angel Hernandez? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then last week, this, this poor kid, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. Did you see that story? No. They're winning the game. The... The unwritten rule of baseball, if you're up by more than six and seven oh, runs. I have seen this. It's a home run, right? It's a grand slam home right, run. Right, right, right. And they're up by seven runs or They're up more? by seven runs. Right. Bases are loaded. Right. 3 0 count. Right. Swings Which, away. So, on the other hand, we yell and complain at the players for not hustling, not giving us their all. But this guy gives us his all each and every day. He's the future, he's the face of baseball. He's like another Ken Griffey Jr. with the enthusiasm that he plays with. Mm -hmm. But now he gets reprimanded. Mm -hmm. He gets on live TV. This kid is new to baseball, 21 years old, just his grand slam, leading the majors in home runs at that right, point. Right, right, right. His coach is giving him a look and disciplines him on live television. Right. Are you kidding me? Wait, wait, now, hold on. Hold on. Did, did he give him the take sign, though? The take sign wasn't even there, and they all You're said sure. he never looked at. He never looked to. He never looked at third base. You look at the whole video. He kept his head down, readjusted his bat gloves. He never looked at so third maybe, base. Maybe that's a mistake, though. He admitted he made a mistake by looking down, but you can't make a mistake on playing your best each and every time. No, I get that. I get that. Do you, do you know who Jim Thorpe is? Yes. Jim, all American athlete. Right. He was in the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm, Sweden. And he also played for the New York Giants baseball. And John McGraw was his manager. John McGraw was one of the fiery, you know, just a very fiery, you know, Is that Tim McGraw's dad? No, no. I don't think so. Oh, you know what? I don't know. It's Tim McGraw's dad, country singer. Yeah, no. I don't think Tug McGraw and John McGraw. Maybe they are. I have no idea, actually. But there might be too much time in between there. Anyway, John McGraw is the manager. And... He gives Jim Thorpe the take sign, or the bunt sign, gives him the bunt sign. Jim Thorpe swings away, hits a home run, walk-off home run, Giants win the game. They come walking into the clubhouse. John McGraw says, you're suspended, and I'm fining you, you know, this amount of money. And Jim Thorpe said, I just hit a home run. He goes, I gave you the bunt sign, period. Do you believe in these unwritten rules of baseball? Like, for instance, I hit a home run off you. I'm the best player on the team. I hit a home run off you, and you're the best pitcher on that team. It's okay for you to hit the next after that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, no. Hold on. Hold on. I, I'm sorry. I answered way too quickly. It all depends upon your attitude while hitting the home run. Wait a minute. So now i got to respect you? That's right. That I hit a home run off you? Well, you don't have to respect me, but you don't have to disrespect me by watching it go, flipping the bat. Can't flip the bat. So the bat flip today is out of question. They should not be flipping I the don't bat. like bat flipping. You don't flipping. like the bat Don't flipping. like bat flipping. What about the slow trot? around the bag. Not crazy not about it. Slow but I'm not but, crazy about sprinting around either. Okay. There's got to be a... Because Hunter gotta, Pence will sprint. He will right. get the, he'll hit a home run and get the home home plate within five seconds. Right. I don't like that either. I, I, I There's just a certain... Paul O'Neill was the best home run. Lazy-ass Paul O'Neill that yeah. played with the Yankees with the yeah. gray hair? Yeah. yeah. He would hit a home run, put his head down, and just run around the bases like it was no big deal. We respect the guys who just do it. If you don't hear from them, they just come to work, do their job, and go home like Barry Sanders. Barry but Sanders. What, just, was his, just, what, was his, what was his quote? Act like you've been there before. But somebody, Fernando Tatis has never been in a position like this ever in his life. Yeah, his dad did some amazing things. We basically watched this kid grow up here in St. Louis because mm -hmm. his dad played for the Cardinals. Of course, two grand so slams in one inning. At 21 years old, he's the face of baseball because Mike Trout doesn't want to be the face of baseball. 
Nobody does. But this guy here, he, hey, I'm, I'm all about this. Let me help promote this sport that I love and grew up in. Mm-hmm. And now I'm being punished because I hit a grand slam. Never heard of this before. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying he got punished for hitting a grand slam. He apologized a whole week. A whole week in different media outlets on what he did. Dre, I... On the unwritten rules of baseball. Is it, it's 2020. Now, you said this is not baseball, what we're going through now without the fans. Without the fans, this isn't baseball to you. The unwritten rules, is it time to update them in baseball? Update the unwritten rules? I, it, I, it, I think it, there are some unwritten rules that don't need to be rewritten. So like, for instance, keep these in here. if you hit my player, I'm hitting one of yours. <laughs> You think that's okay? Keep Absolutely. That in there. Keep that in there. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. You that, know, I mean, Bob Gibson. If you crowded the plate on Bob Gibson, he's moving. You're a fool. Yeah, you're moving. He won't hit you, but boy, he'll come. Oh, get chin music from your chin. Get some chin music in there. Yeah. And it's almost like you can't do that now, because guys charge the mound, and you know, you don't charge the mound either. It's another thing. Uh, the past two weeks, there's been some brawls going right, on. Right, right. I mean, I'm not. I mean, fights are going to happen, but I don't think you should. I don't think you should should charge them out. If you get hit, don't worry about it. When we get out there, we'll hit one of them. We're going to take care of them for you. Yep. We, we got this. Yep. We like Sonny Corleone says, "You hit us, we hit you back." <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you know, being being, I, I I managed, coached kids playing baseball, and I I instilled fundamentals in these yes. kids. You yes. Yes. Hit the cutoff, man. If you're scoring from third base and there's a kid behind you running home, you step on the plate, you turn around, and you tell them whether to hit it or, or stay up. If the ball gets hit up in the air, you point at it and, and help the person who's going to be there. There's communication going on in every play. Absolutely. And Somebody's it's fundamentals. Talking. Yeah. And when you're on first base, a lot of these guys who are just there to win today, that's all that, that's all that's important is winning today, not necessarily teaching the kids fundamentals. They're steel scientists. Steal! <laughs> No, we had hand signals. Of course. You better look at that third base coach. Of course. You better you not You just miss. said it. You there just it proved my point yeah. on Fernando Tatis. You better look down the third, base, third base and get that sign from that guy. Because if you do. don't, you missed it and you get yelled at. Yeah. And that's that. Grand slam or not. Damn it. It was still a grand slam. It was still a grand slam. What a hell of a grand slam. It was. One more story about coaching kids and then we'll, we'll call it a day, right? Where, yeah. So, at that age, there's no discipline in the kids playing. They steal on every pitch, you know? And my kids couldn't steal unless I gave them the steal sign, Sorry. and that was that, you know? So they would always look at me and I'd give them the steal sign, or I wouldn't give them the steal sign. So I finally, finally got a left-handed pitcher. The kid was a left-handed pitcher. I'm gonna have to stand up for this, Jen. Can we still do the camera if I stand up? Yeah. Can you still see me? Mm-hmm. Get a little back, I guess. Back and to the left. JFK reference, everybody, from Draymond Ted, back into the left. Okay, so I had a left-handed pitcher, right? First base is here, home plate is there. I said, when that kid leads off the base, I want you to look home, look right at him, and then just step towards him and throw a lazy little to the first base to get the ball back. Second pitch comes in, look at him again, step towards him, throw it a little harder this time, and get it back. The third time, don't ever look at him. Look home. Step towards him and then throw. We were picking off kids left and right at first base. Where the other guy wouldn't even let his kids lead off the back. That's how bad they're Because they're all ready to steal, you know? The and left handed pitcher was something else in Little League. I he hate something it. was wrong. Even in high school. Yeah, it just look different. God, it was so hard. And your lead had to be so much shorter because if it's a right hand, all you had to do was look at his right heel. And if that came up off the rubber, get back. If yeah. not, go, you know? I bet you were a great coach. I was a great Those coach. are little, small, little things that a lot of people miss out on right there. Yeah, I was a great coach. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, 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 I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Montez. Uh, his podcast is um, Who's to Blame? And Mornings with Montez, Middays with Montez. Tell us about those. Mornings with Montez is going to start this upcoming Monday. And Midday with Montez is going to start this upcoming Monday as well, where we're just going to do a live feed. On throughout our social media platform. What time Facebook. does Middays with Montez start? Uh, it's going to start at 11.30. 11.30, we're going to do that. But Mornings with Montez can start anywhere between 4 and 6 a.m. because I'm a insomnia. If insomnia, if I'm crazy, 
So between 4 and 6 a.m., I'm going to do mornings with Montez with a cup of coffee and right. cover some of the interesting topics of the day. I and love you, man, but I shan't be getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to watch it. I will watch it on the replay. Yeah, and then the podcast is still going to be done each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as well, which you can get on Anchor and SoundCloud and through who's to blame .com. And you also gotta watch them. Yeah, my I mean, page, Who's to Blame, on Facebook. So a lot of content we're going to put out there and have a lot of fun with it. So, yeah. Right on. Got to watch and listen to, to his podcasts and um, download them however you, however you get your podcasts. Uh, great to have you, man, as always. Thanks for having me Let's again, Let's do guys. it again. Mr. Jen, Mr. Vic, appreciate it. Right on, right appreciate on. It. Ray Montez. That's Porcelli's Deli for another day. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we have Guy, the Hawaiian blues fan, Benzing. Uh, right? Eight away in the tomorrow? building. Is that tomorrow? Tomorrow, Wednesday? Yeah. Then, yes. Yeah. This kid grew up in St. Louis, joined the Navy, moved to Hawaii, and he's got a uh, blues podcast all about the St. Louis blues from Hawaii. No way. Yeah. Blues is huge in Hawaii. Well, yeah. It's huge. And Elvis music is through the roof over there because he performed over there. Aloha at from one Hawaii. Time. Alo oh, Aloha. Man. Aloha from Hawaii, right? There it is. Yeah, huh? yeah, and yeah, also yeah. Jawan music, which is reggae and Hawaiian mixed. God, it's I amazing. love reggae music. Yes, it is. It's love fun. reggae music. So, fun fact those Elvis movies actually incentivized the tourist industry in I Hawaii. Bet. And I it bet. just started a huge flood. It's of amazing white people how people the state. still think he's there. Yeah. You think he's alive? Elvis? Nah, I think he died in 85. <laughs> I gotta tell you, we moved here in 93. Maybe six months, we've been here maybe a year. And we were at Clarkson and Manchester, where Chuck E. Cheese is now. Did you, I guess there was some store we were going there, Party Town or something like that. And we were walking through the, through the parking lot. And somebody had the radio on so loud, but not to one station. Like they were, they were switching stations, <laughs> but not, it was like loud. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I said, let's just go walk and see what's going on. So I walk and this guy that's in the car doing it turns and looks at me. I swear to God, it was Elvis. <laughs> and I that just looked at That's not where I saw that going. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> How old were you when this happened? 37. Were you soft stuff at the time? Was it hot outside? It was hot out. Was I sauced up? Okay. No. Okay, gotcha. We didn't that at all, huh? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But I said to my wife, I said, oh my God, was that Elvis? And she's like, well, he had, you know, the eyes looked a lot like Elvis, you know? He's being erratic and acting like a jackass like Elvis would, you know? Some people, we just do not want to let them die, no. even though they die. Yeah. People still saw him. Like him. Jim Morrison, you think Jim Morrison's dead? No. You think he's alive? I think he's on an island somewhere. Yeah, that, I do with too. With the guy from that that owns Virgin Airlines. I think him and him, him Branson, hooked up. Richard yeah. Branson. Yeah, they hooked up someday. Do you think Michael Jackson's alive? Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Mike's gone. Um, I guess that's everybody. Jimmy Hendrix. So. I, I think he's out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the interesting fact about Jimi Hendrix? That the night before he died, he was jamming with the band War. No. Yep. Where's that tape? Know if there is because he was discovered in Greenwich Village, right? Jimi Hendrix, I'd say that it was a what village, Greenwich, Greenwich, Greenwich Village. What I call it, Greenwich, Greenwich. oh, Greenwich Village. <laughs> I get the hell I get that. It's all good, it's all good. But I didn't know that is it Keith Richards, not Keith Richards, uh, one of the Beatles, oh, John Lennon, George Harrison, George Harrison. Okay, when he went there, he stayed in his place, mm. and word came out, hey. You gotta have this many people around him at all times. Mm -hmm. He hates to be alone. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about that yeah. about him that he and needed left. so many people around him. And look what happened, they left him alone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks so much, Dre. Great to see you. We'll do it again. See you tomorrow at noon Friday. Just as a little programming note, housekeeping. Uh, Coffee with Vic is now at ten AM Central. Because Nine o'clock. Because I said so. Because Jen said so. And that's all you need to know is that Jen said so. <laughs> Time that's just that. do what I say. All right. Thanks all right. a lot for watching, okay. Dre. Thanks for coming in. And we will see you tomorrow on Porcelli's Deli.